Let's try this other one. I'm going to use this thick coconut meat as a socket lube. This is soap I got from a hotel. What do we have here? What I do is I, I take them so they come apart. Here's a fire drop. I found this, I think, at a dollar store. Welcome to another episode of For You To Survive. Typically, when we use a socket, we have something solid, like this piece of fatwood. And the spindle goes in, and the fatwood's strong enough to keep it together and actually self-lubricate it with the, whatever resin's left in the wood. Say, for instance, we have a piece of bark, and we have to talk about the top of the spindle. Um, especially with ice or bark, if you have the top of the spindle that's too pointed, it could go through the bark and break it like that. You don't want that. Granted, I would probably try to use thicker bark, but that's just an idea on what could happen. So for ice or different situations, you might be able to make a, a more thicker diameter top of the spindle. So for ice or if you're using a socket lube. And now if you're using a rock or antler or something like that, you can have a real pointed spindle but for uh, socket lubes you can get away and you probably need something a little bit more uh, blunt so this is typically what we use and this this works out pretty good as a spindle top of the spindle but i just wanted to make you aware of that in order to use some of these bow strings that we've been concentrating on you need to be really good at how you make your spindles because the way the spindle is made has a direct bearing on how much strain gets placed on the bowstring. So I think bowstrings, which I really addressed quite a lot in the last few videos, um, there's a place for that because what happens if you find yourself in a survival situation and you don't have any cordage or string? There are ways of making it and all that kind of thing, but you're better off carrying your own bit of string or cordage. However, say you're in that dire situation where you, I don't know, had to run away from something or just got away from a crash or something like that and you had to get away before an explosion. I know, kind of dramatic. But if you were in some situation where you had to get out as fast as possible and couldn't take anything with you, I think uh, knowing how to make a bowstring from scratch is very valuable. But we're going to focus on sockets today so those bowstrings work more efficiently and actually last before they break. Okay, so the point of the coconut was to be entertaining a little bit, but it also shows the possibility of using maybe uh, items that you haven't thought of as sockets and socket lubes. Today, we're talking about the coefficient of friction. This is your socket science lesson. We're not going to stay in here too long. Essentially, the coefficient of friction is a measure of the friction between two surfaces. In this case, the top of the spindle and the socket. The uh, coconut meat has some oils in it and that reduces the coefficient of friction. Now, ice has a really low coefficient of friction with wood, so that's why I like ice sockets. Yes, they may melt a little bit, but huh, they reduce friction. Now, I want the coefficient of friction low at the top of the spindle, but I want the coefficient of friction high at the bottom of the spindle so I can generate powder. That's all the socket science lesson we're going to do so we can get to the uh, good stuff. Now I have ice so I can make an ice socket. The uh, spindle goes into the ice. Now I used this for the video uh, with the root bowstring but it kind of dug in a little bit but it doesn't matter it um, a shallow divot works and you need a little bit thickness a little bit of thickness of ice so it doesn't break into your hand but this ice is pretty strong and it worked so if you don't feel comfortable you use a piece of bark in back of the ice or a rock or a glove so it makes a really smooth socket the coefficient of friction is really low with an ice socket Here's some white cedar resin. You can scrape it 
there's not too much of it here. You're usually not going to get like tons of it, but kind of scrape it off, get the powdery stuff in the socket. Here's some more white cedar. I was looking for other resin and wow, this is a pretty good representation. There's stuff here, there's some here, here, looking up here. So this tree is quite generous. There's another good, good one there. In a relatively short time, I collected a respectable amount of this white cedar resin. I see some serious squirrel activity here, and they like spruce, so these spruce cones are definitely going to clue me in that there's a spruce around here. White cedar might not be the most common form of socket lubrication, but spruce is. So look at that. It's that nice goopy, somewhere between solid and liquid. It just fits in there really nicely. That's already starting to slide nicely. We'll just fill that up, get the end of the spindle coated really nicely, put some resin inside the socket divot. We should take some more for later too. Here's some white pine. This is good. I'll push into it, loosen it up. Nice. I'll put some in the socket divot. Some goes on the spindle. Spin and twist a little bit. Ooh, that's a good clump. I'll just, I'll work it in just like before. We have some excess, but we'll use that for uh, after we drill the starter hole. Here's the white pine. It's a really tall tree, one of my favorites. There's another one over here, and here's a smaller version of it. And there's some resin. I see some potential fatwood here. That looks promising. That's definitely fatwood. You can make the socket by making a little divot in it. But I wanted to bring up fatwood because fatwood's kind of like a cousin to uh, using pine resin. So if I take some pine resin, I can actually <laughs> lube a fatwood socket, which is <laughs> probably not really mentioned much, but I'll give the fatwood even more lubrication. But fatwood by itself is usually a pretty rocking socket as it is. It doesn't need any help. This is a more usable version because I smacked this against a rock to split it and clearly this nice fat wood resin is visible. So that's fat wood. It's Here's a balsam fir with a bunch of juicy blisters. Oh yeah. I'm going to add that balsam fir resin to the socket. Not so much in that one. That one popped out. Get some of this off there. Let's go for one more. Let's try this one. There we go. I want to get as much of that on there as possible. And that's going to be a great socket lube. I was out here making a video on socket lubes and I needed some bark to show you something, but then I stumbled upon this uh this cherry tree. I wonder if this this goo or this gum would actually work as a socket lube. So I'm gonna collect some of this and we'll give it a try later. We used to call this jelly as kids or che like chewing gum, but this feels like it has potential to be a socket lube. I'll get some on one side, some on the other side. Okay, that's a fascinating experiment within the video that I wasn't anticipating. All right, I'd like to get one thing straight. Sure, 
food, oils, that sort of thing can be used as a socket lube, but I feel that socket lubes are best used as socket lubes that you find natural. Um, let food be food and socket lubes be socket lubes. There's plenty of natural socket lubes out there. Now, of course, if your life's on the line and you've got to get that fire, yes, use what you need to. But let's socket lubes be socket lubes and food be food. And the calories will be better used that way because, well, calories are hard to come by in a wild. So if you're trying to survive, use the calories for food and energy to keep you alive. I made two holes, one for coconut water to come out and one for air to come out. I used the screwdriver, the knife. Now, I got a coconut. But, do I also have a bow drill socket? Oh yes I do. Let's try this other one. This one, it didn't work out so well. Pfft, smells pretty rotten. Anyway, one out of two ain't bad. I'm gonna use this thick coconut meat as a socket lube because coconut has oils in it and it's going to help let the socket spin freely. I'll show you that. We may think that, oh no, all is lost with this, but not necessarily the case. I could use the shell as a uh, socket. I'll show you that too. This part's a little bit more on the modern side, but if you need to, you need to. Who knows what the survival situation is going to entail. If it's an urban survival situation, use what you have. This is soap I got from a hotel. It says almond and olive on it, but essentially what you do, I'm going to start from scratch here. You get some, some uh, flakes off of it and you put it inside. You put it inside the socket divot, you get it mixed up, and uh, you put more if you need to, but it looks like there's a decent amount there. So that is soap, and I may choose to use more, but I typically don't use these kind of socket lubes because I like to find what's natural and what's out in the wild, So, but like I said, if that's what you have, that's what you have. This is a candle. So I'm gonna get some scrapings off a candle. Now the nice thing is this doesn't render my candle useless. I still have a viable candle. So there's some candle wax there. Scrape a little bit more. And I should clean it off, but for the sake of demonstration, same deal. You get it in there, you incorporate the wax into the socket divot, get it on the top of the spindle. Looks like I need a little bit more, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Rotate the candle a little bit. That works. Now, what do we have here? Some chapstick. What I did here was this little circle here. Well, I essentially cut off... I cut off a section and I still have usable chapstick so it's not unreasonable that you might carry chapstick with your hiking another interesting option with that is there's these lip balms what I do is I I take them so they come apart turn them upside down so now the spindle can go inside it can go inside the um, the chapstick so I've actually used it like this as a socket and drilled. So that was effective. 
So that's an interesting take on things. And the plastic keeps things from uh, coming apart. So interesting little variation there. So and that was a promotional one, so it was essentially free. In keeping with a line of chapstick or Vaseline, here's a fire drop. You remember the fire drops from the fire drop video. Well, you can take a little bit of the fire drop out. If you need to refresh on the fire drop video, go ahead and check that out. But essentially, the uh, cotton ball and Vaseline go in right where the right where the chapstick was in that socket divot. So that creates less friction also. But that whole talk started off with some chapstick that was inside there. So that's essentially the socket lube, the chapstick. Okay, moving right along. This last one is Neosporin or triple antibiotic. So you have options. I found this, I think, at a dollar store. This was at a different place, but you uh, squeeze some Neosporin in and boom, there's your lube. It's kind of like Vaseline, but you may have this in a first aid kit. So it's not unreasonable that you would have Neosporin with you as a socket lube. So these are more modern or man-made socket lubes, but hey, if you have them and you need them and your life's on the line, that's for you to survive. I can use the coconut meat as a good lube, or I can drill just with the husk without the meat in it. And without the coconut meat, I like to hold it with my fingers apart so the heat of the spindle doesn't make this coconut husk so hot that I can't stand to hold it. If I have my hand over here, I get too much heat. So I reduce the heat produced. So that way it's safer for me. So. It works as a socket this way. But we come here to use the socket lube. So I'll show you with the, with the coconut meat. And this, I can go straight up or I can angle a little bit. That way I use different parts of the coconut meat. And this is going really, really nice. For anybody new, welcome aboard. For my subscribers, thank you for coming back. Thank you for subscribing and supporting me and helping me grow. I really appreciate that. Let the fire burn into the bundle of leaves. Boom. That counts. That certainly counts. So you can see the husk by itself. And you can see the coconut meat, which provided friction reduction, which I prefer. Here's that jelly. We'll mix it in. You can see the top of the spindle is uh, freshly cut, so you know I'm not cheating by using other materials in there because the coconut worked well, the other lubes work, but I want you to know that this is all I'm using. So there it is, let's do it. That's an ember, that works. This is the uh, part where the jelly was, but I think what happened was some of it fell out when I was drilling, but it allowed me to get the ember before there was too much friction in here and before it burned too much. So I'd say it's still effective. There's the fire from the cherry jelly socket lube ember. Here's a special preview for the next For You To Survive episode. So I suggest you subscribe so you don't miss it.